It's Scat Saturday Live with Taylor Bell, Nathaniel Cox, Jai Dooley, Cameron Irvine, Miranda Jude, Bailey Vincent, and Sam Yamasta. And now, it's Step Saturday Live. Hey guys, and welcome back to another episode of Scout Saturday Live. On today's 22nd episode, we will be focusing on something incredibly interesting. This episode is nautical themed, which means that we will be bombarding you with facts and crafts, all themed around boats, the ocean, and so, so much more. But as some of you may know, this month we are also celebrating Memorial Day. So there will definitely be something to keep an eye out for in this episode. Some of them are really fun. Some of them are sciencey, And some of them are just really, really cool. You might even learn a couple knots that some sailors and sea scouts use while on a boat in the ocean. So let's get right into it with our very first project of the day. Something I personally have been looking forward to making. Flower pot whales. Welcome back once again to my craft table. So as I just said, I'm going to be showing you one of my absolute favorite crafts to do, especially when I'm at home. And this is a flower pot whale. Here's a little example that I made a little bit earlier. Little eyes, tail, and we're going to be, and we're going to be making something very very similar to this. Now remember, everything we make here is 100% customizable. So you can add any little decorations you want. So the things that you're gonna need for this super fun craft are a flower pot. You can use any size you want, but I love the small ones. I think they're adorable. Some blue paint, but nobody said you can't have a pink whale. So you can have any color you want, really. I just chose blue. A paintbrush. You can see I already have some paint on there. A pencil, just in case you wanna mark out some of your special features to add. Some scissors some blue paper, which I already used to cut out these right here, which are gonna be the tail and the fins. Make sure those don't fly away. A glue stick. You can also use liquid glue. I'm sure that would work a little bit better. And I chose to use googly eyes, because I think they're super fun. But of course, you can draw on the eyes if you want. So the first thing we're gonna do is use the paint. So I chose blue. Let's put this little guy to the side clear off my workstation. I don't want to get anything super messy. And since I don't, I didn't bring anything out here to use as a paint palette. So what I'm going to do is just take the top and squirt it on the top. <laughs> Let's see if I can get a little bit closer. There we go. And then I'm going to take my time with my paintbrush and just paint it blue. This might take a little while and I might have to do multiple coats. So I'll catch you guys back here when I'm done painting. Welcome back once again. And I took that little break time where he was drying to clean up my workstation. Remember, whenever you're working, make sure to clean up. You don't wanna leave a mess. So now, something that I didn't do on this one over here was give him a little smile. So, I ran and I got a Sharpie. You can use any marker you want. Or you can use paint. Put that there. And I'm gonna try to draw a little smile. Not sure how I'm gonna do it yet. Let's see. Oh, that's kind of cute. Okay, there's my little smile. And while I'm at it, I'm gonna add a little blowhole at the top. Okay, so here are my two finished products. This one has a little smile and a wonky eye. <laughs> and the tail's supposed to be a little bit more up, but I can fix that whenever I want. Maybe I'll name them. I'm not sure what I'm gonna name them yet. But there they are. Now they have a little friend. So I hope you guys enjoy making these, because I know I did. And let's get on to the next craft. Wow, Miranda, that craftsmanship looked really well done. 
I'm so sorry, I couldn't resist. But I do think Bailey has some really cool facts she wants to share with us. So I was doing some research on US nautical history or maritime history, and I learned so many cool facts, I just had to share some with you guys. I'm gonna show you some major events in US maritime history. Maybe you'll learn a few things you never knew before, and please excuse my drawings, I'm not the greatest artist, but at least it'll be entertaining. We will start with Christopher Columbus. In 1492, Columbus went on a voyage to find a faster way to Asia. At this point in history, everyone knew the Earth was round, but Columbus believed that the Earth was small and somewhat pear-shaped. In his theory, by sailing the opposite direction to Asia, most sailed east, but Columbus, believing that no land was in the way, sailed west. He took three ships on his cruise, the Santa Maria, the Pinta, and the Nina. Instead, he discovered North America, but he didn't discover the United States. Instead, he landed on what we now refer to as the Bahamas. In 1607, English settlers set up Jamestown, the first permanent English settlement in what is now the United States. The settlers chose the location close to the water in hopes of building a thriving community. This location also made it easier for them to park their ships, the sun constant, the godspeed, and the discovery. Their location also made trade a whole lot easier. Once the settlers got their hands on tobacco seeds, Jamestown became a massive tobacco export for Europe. The settlement survived for about a hundred years after its founding, but it was left behind after the capital changed to Williamsburg. In 1620, the Mayflower took to the seas. This ship brought the pilgrims from England to the New World. The Mayflower landed in Plymouth Harbor and set up Plymouth Colony. Fun fact, this is where the first Thanksgiving took place. The Pilgrims had planned to arrive by early October using two ships, but delays and complications made it so that they could only take one, the Mayflower. The Pilgrims arrived in November and had to face a harsh winter without getting their bearings yet. Without the Native Americans that helped them, no Pilgrims would have survived. In 1775, the Continental Congress sent out two sailing vessels on a mission to intercept British warships that carried supplies to give their troops that were fighting in the Revolutionary War. This is widely accepted as the birthday of the United States Navy. In 1819, the SS Savannah made the first transatlantic crossing by steamer. This proved that you could cross the Atlantic using both sail and steam power. However, the Savannah was very controversial for her time. Her massive engine took up a good chunk of her cargo space, which made it difficult for her to gain success as a steamship. After she came back from her maiden voyage, she was stripped and made a sail-only ship. The Savannah was wrecked on Long Island in 1821, and no American ship crossed the Atlantic for almost 30 years. Of course, there are many more events in U.S. maritime history, but I wanted to share some that I found interesting. Hope you enjoyed it. All these facts about imperialism and boats is so interesting. But do you guys ever wonder why stuff floats? Yeah, like, why do these really heavy boats, made of wood, and now steel, float on water? We're about to do some experiments that explain just that. Swayze and I will be doing an experiment on buoyancy. It's called the tinfoil and pennies experiment. We will be making different shaped boats uh, out of tinfoil or aluminum foil and dropping them into our substances. I will be using vegetable oil and Swayze will be using water. We'll then count how many pennies uh, it takes for each of our boats to sink. Let's find out. Legend says that there was a man named Archimedes, a Greek mathematician who was tasked with figuring out if the king's crown was real gold or if it was fake. In order to do this, Archimedes figured that a good way to figure that out would be to see if the crown's density was the same as that of gold. That displaced water becomes important when we talk about whether or not things will float. So, that amount of displaced water has a weight, right? That's determined by gravity. That's like a gravitational force issue. Um, the object also has a weight. So Archimedes' principle basically says that the upward force, the buoyant force that pushes things up, that might make them float, is equal to the weight of the displaced water. So, that means things that float, um, they displace an amount of water which weighs more than they do. Things that sink weigh more than the water that they displace. And that is basically where we get Archimedes' principle and buoyant force. 
For my tinfoil and penny experiment, I'm gonna be using water. I just dyed it blue. And the materials you're going to need is tinfoil, pennies, and any kind of substance that I or so I'm using water. And your tinfoil can be any size, but a four by six size is a good starting measure. So the first step is to fold your tinfoil into these like boat shaped things. Mine don't look as pretty, but that's okay. Now I'm going to get the water and I can put the little boats in there like that. And I can use these pennies to see how many they will use to float. So I'll do the one I made first. Oh, he sunk. <laughs> okay, so let's give this a try. One, two, three, thirty-six, oh, thirty-seven. That's seeping in. Thirty-seven. We're at thirty-seven at the moment, and it's filling with oil. And there she goes. So. Boat type number one sank at 37. Wow, that was really cool, guys. I remember doing an experiment like that when I was a Cub Scout. You know, we've been talking a lot about aquatic themed things. I don't think we've covered anything about Memorial Day. Don't worry though, I have the perfect tasty treat for you all at home. Marshmallow Flag Pops. All right, everyone. So first, you're going to need to get your materials. Right now, I'm using these jumbo sized flat marshmallows because they're easier to color and they resemble a flag. You're also going to want to get these edible color markers. And you can find them at most craft stores. Now also know before you begin this project, it can get pretty messy. Alright, so this next step is pretty easy. What you're going to want to do is get your edible color marker or food coloring or whatever and you're going to want to color a flag onto your marshmallow. Now, no, it has to be edible. No inedible stuff like real markers or pens or crayons, none of that. Got it? All right. Awesome. Now, once you've finished your flags, as you can see, I finished mine. The next step is the last step is to stick a stick, a cooking stick, not a stick you found on a tree, into your marshmallow. Now, I find that a twisting motion really helps so that you don't, you know, get, a, get the wrong grip and rub off the color. And then, you're done! Now you can make a lot of these on Memorial Day and give them out to people on Memorial Day. And the cool thing is that since many countries celebrate their own form of Memorial Day, you can make other flags on the marshmallows too. Here's an example of what I did. Make sure to share photos of your tasty treats, and I hope you enjoy the rest of the episode. Those are not bad! Hey Sam, do you know which knots are the best? Well, I don't know. Personally, I like hitches, and that's because they're pretty useful, so that's going to be my guess. No silly, no knot is the best because they're all tied! <laughs> now let's tie some knots. I'm going to teach y'all three different knots you can use um, around water or just like in everyday life and some of them are used for scouting requirements. So the first one is a bowline. So my favorite way to do this one is to wrap the um, rope around your body, um, cross over the main line, go under, around the main line, and back through the loop. And that's it. And this knot is very useful for like life-saving winters because it doesn't slip um, unless you pull the other one. <laughs> the next knot is a clove hitch, which is commonly used to secure a line to a rail. Um, and for teaching purposes, I'm going to use this mason jar to tie it on because it's easier to tie onto a fixed object. So there's two different ways you can tie this knot. One way you can do two loops facing two different directions, like that. Lay them on top of each other, put them on the fixed object, and pull them tight, and then you have a clove hitch. It's a good thing that knots exist. 
Imagine trying to keep a boat from drifting away with tape. What a sticky situation that would be. Now that we've talked about boats and water for a while, let's make one. This is gonna be made out of recycled materials you can find at home, and it will be able to float and sail. For this boat project, you may wanna use the following. Some water bottles, string, paper, or cardboard works as well, chopsticks, and let's try not to use tape. That's gonna be my challenge to everybody at home. Try to think of other ways you can use to secure and build your boat without using tape, or at the bare minimum, limiting your use of it. This is the boat that I made. No tape anywhere. All I did was use rope, some scissors, and some chopsticks. You may be wondering how I attached the water bottles to the chopsticks with only using rope. Well, it's called a square lashing. I'm gonna show you guys how to tie it. I will now teach you guys how to tie the square lashing. But first, you may be asking what it's used for, or what can it be used for? So the square lashing it is used to secure two poles at a 90 degree angle. So think of square. A square has four 90 degree angles. First, you tie a clove hitch to the bottom pole. Next, you can do it to the top pole. And we do these, start these things called wraps. So, To this point, you're going to want to start doing these things called wraps. These are horizontal wraps around in between the two poles. The tighter they are, the stronger the lashing will be. So make them tight. So now I will start wraps. Once you're done with those, you finish with a clove hitch on the top lock. You see? You got yourself a nice, tight, and strong square lashing. I will now demonstrate how you can attach your chopstick or whatever you're using to make the floor of your boat onto your water bottle, the float. So first, because we're going to be using a square lashing, tie a clove hitch around the water bottle. Next, take your chopstick. You can start with the wraps. Finally, finish off the clove hitch. A really, really tiny clove hitch. And boom, you have successfully attached your chopstick to your water bottle. Now, to show you what that looks like, if you do all four of them, this is what the hull of the boat should look like. I use different water bottles for these, but as you can see, I used the square lashing for each water bottle. I put two on each just to make sure that they were stable and secure and they would stay together like that. Now, let's see if the boat I made actually works. 
There's a little bit of wind out, so it might actually move. Let's see. Yeah, it kind of works. Still floats, it doesn't sink. Well, I guess the one's going this way now, okay. Anyways, so that was my boat project. I hope you all had fun and enjoyed this. And don't forget to send us our your submissions of what you guys made. Remember, you don't only have to use what I use. You can use milk cartons, you can use egg cartons, you can use whatever you want. Just remember, reduce, reuse, and recycle. Well, it's a boat time. We wrapped up this episode. Hopefully, you guys learned some useful stuff because I know I did. Don't forget, you can always go to our webpage where you will find information about today's show, videos of past episodes, our advancement trackers, and much more. Visit bsa la.org forward slash SSL. <laughs> A bolder size thank you to Eventing for generously supporting Scout Saturday Live. Eventing is an online service that helps scouting units organize and run campouts, field trips, eco projects, and fundraisers. For more information, go to eventing.com. Do you guys have an idea for an upcoming show? Or maybe a project you'd like to see us do? Or hey, maybe you just have some questions. Get your parents' permission and email us at scoutsaturdaylive at scouting.org. This episode's unit shoutouts are going to Pack and Troop 2019 from Murfreesboro, Tennessee, Pack 808 from Hamburg, Germany, Pack 933 from Brooklyn, New York, Crew 808 from Lakewood, Colorado, Troop 85 from Florence, Mississippi, Troop 310 from Moon Township, Pennsylvania, Troop 304 from Saginaw, Michigan, Troop 601 from Firmingdale, New York, Troop 307 from Northridge, California, Troop 4005 from Anishton, Alabama, Pack 92 from Murfreesboro, Tennessee, Pack 301 from Anna, Ohio, Crew 774, and Troop 4112 from Orange County, California, and Ship 3303 from Omaha, Nebraska. And if you guys have any weird or wacky patrol names in your troop, crew, ship, or other unit, please send us them and we would like to give y'all a shout out. If you'd like to learn more about scouting or know someone who may want to join in in all of this fun, be sure to visit BeASCOUT.org to find a scouting unit near you. Furthermore, if you would like to read about all the new and constantly updating outing guidelines, you can visit scouting.org. Now, get to crafting, take some photos or videos, and show us what you did. We would love to see. Now, be safe, and don't forget to wash your hands with soap and water. We'll be seeing you next time. Bye! I'm gonna teach y'all three different knots that you can use in um something. That displaced water becomes important when we talk about whether or not things will float.